What happened was that uh, I was recording a different song and um, we had our drum track, our drum pattern recorded and we were using it to trigger a synthesizer. But what we needed to do to make the, make the synthesizer trigger off of the, the beat properly um, was slow the track down. So we slowed the track down to half speed and something weird happened with the synthesizer and it, it worked but it set something else off which was just going random which is actually the kind of pumping noise that you hear at the bottom of the track and I just loved the sound of it so much and that rhythm that we scrapped the other song and just started from that that rhythm and that pumping noise and uh, I wanted it to be a fairly aggressive mm -hmm. record um, I've danced to records like this for years and I've really, I'm, they're the type of records I buy all the time and I've never really, I've ne never really had the courage to make one. Um, and now that as a producer I feel confident enough to do it, you know, this was my chance. The way it evolved was it started off as a purely sexually aggressive lyric and then I thought about it because at the time I was producing for someone else, it wasn't my record. And uh, as it became obvious that I was going to do the record, I thought about the way that the lyrics should actually represent me and that I should make some concession to the fact that it was 1987 and there were certain things that were different. And I finished writing it over the next couple of months.
Myself, I don't think the video is very risky at all. I think, um, again, when you see sex around you uh, portrayed in, on so many different levels, but most of them fairly sexually aggressive, especially in videos, I think when you take it in this context, which is obviously a, a very monogamous context, to the extent that the word actually appears twice in the video, I think the level of eroticism in the video is fairly, I think, subtle. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, that combined with the elements of monogamy, I think, I really didn't think it was risky at all. Obviously, everybody else, well, an awful lot of people don't disagree with me, but th those um, who made the decisions seem to, uh, seem to disagree in, in my own country. In America, it's, it's different. The system is different in America. People make decisions um, in different territories and uh, for different reasons, and uh, this, the video is actually being shown, which is good, because I'm very proud of the video, you know. I think I'm a lot more optimistic, probably, mm -hmm. about the future than I was at the end of Wham. Um, it was an incredibly intense four years, you know. Um, 
And I think I lost maybe some of my uh, perspective during that time. I became uh, very negative about a lot of things which I should have been very grateful for. I think I've got back that kind of perspective. Also, I've had time to remember myself as an individual again, as opposed to being just part of what was called a phenomenon. And I worked very hard to create that phenomenon, but um, having created it, it did kind of run away. And I, I think it's, it's taken me a while to get back to um, seeing where I want to go and what I want to do with the rest of my life. But I'm very happy now. I'm happier than I've been probably in four or five years. Mm. Uh, and I'm very balanced, I think, at the moment. Mm. I 
I think it was not necessarily important for me to toughen up. I think the reason that the two solo singles previous to this one were ballads was because they were ballads and couldn't be couldn't be performed really within the context of Wham, which was why they were mm. taken out of Wham. Mm -hmm. It wasn't so much that anything that was slow was George Michael mm -hmm. because George Michael was slow, it was that anything that, that I wrote that was up tempo was automatically part of the Wham thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted people to be aware from the start that I have no intention of yeah. falling into an MOR category just yet, you know. I mean, I'm 23 years old and I think it would be kind of a waste of a lot of years to try and go into that now. It's not that I don't enjoy um, performing ballads and writing ballads. I think ballads are probably my strongest area, or have been to date, but uh, I think, um, you know, I've got a few years to wait before I have to settle <laughs> into that.
I'm not a workaholic. I think workaholics are people that have to be occupied with work all the time or they're not happy. I'm someone who is absolutely hopeless at delegating anything. Not necessarily because I don't trust people to do it, but because my mind works on what I have delegated. Even if I give it to someone else to do it, my mind will be working on it. So I'd rather be there and do it myself. Um, and being like a writer and a producer, as well as a performer, and also be involved in, in video and stuff, I've just found that I gradually, the more you go into it, the, the more you go into your, your career, and the more you go into each aspect, there's something further that you could do to ensure perfection, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it goes all the way down through the pressing, checking pressings of records to doing the cut, doing everything. And uh, you can't, it's not a matter of being a workaholic. If you're gonna do all those things, you spend all your time working, it's as simple as that. Um, so that's the way my, my life works. I, I wish it didn't actually, I wish I could delegate because some people who delegate seem to manage just as well, you know? Um, but uh, that's just the way I am.